you, brothers, and I didn't think I had them. <laughs> Good to have Brother Tanner and Sister Jesse with us tonight. Yeah. We're getting ready to make an altar for two songs. And uh, we appreciate the Lord and all that he is to us. And I'd like to preach a little bit here tonight. It would just be the will of the Lord to touch us and help us. And uh, there have been times that I've not felt like preaching. Brother Tom, can you give me just a little more here? That I've not felt like preaching, but uh, the Lord came by and touched us and helped us. And then I was able to get it across. There have been times that I really felt like that I really had it, and then get up and struggle with it. So it's all in God's hands. Amen. I feel like... Uh, uh, the old Methodist preacher said one time with well, just a young boy said he went to the Methodist church with his parents with his mother and he said uh, the preacher got up to preach and said he's a great big fellow red faced and just sweated all the time and said he believed he had six or eight handkerchiefs because any pocket he went to he had one and I've got to look at mine and can't find it but uh, uh, the Lord's able to come by and help us here. Psalm 137, Psalm 137. And uh, if we could, we'd like to preach today. I, I, I really felt like I was, didn't get where I needed to get this morning. And then before I got home, I got a text from somebody that I never do get a text from. Uh, well, I get a text from him, but not like that. Thank you, thank you. And uh, he said, you were on target today, and I appreciate it. Wonderful. So, if I just help one, then that's, that's something. Yeah. That God will help us. But the first six verses of Psalm 137, the psalmist said, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Right. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us of mirth required of us mirth saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And the answer was this, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Right. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. If I could preach tonight just a few minutes, I'd preach on this very simple thought of singing the Lord's song. Singing the Lord's song. Uh, a lot of times we've preached on this and we've talked about hanging our harps on the willow and various things, but we got to do need to look at the fact that the harp was mentioned here. Yes. And it's been said that the harp is one of the purest sounds of music to the human ear. And uh, I've not been around harp much, music much, but I've listened to it, and it's very pretty. But it's probably one of the oldest instruments that's recorded in the scripture because we can find that all the way back in one of Noah's descendants, a fellow by the name of Jubal invented the harp and music. Amen. And it was very much used by the Hebrews in their worship. Amen. And so music from the harp in David's time was what trouble was what soothed Saul's troubled soul. Right. Do you remember the scripture said? that an evil spirit came upon Saul. Right. Amen. And uh, 
the music from that anointed singer and that anointed player, musician, amen, that soothed his troubled spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, while Judah was in captivity, here in this uh, uh, text, the harps, they said, was hanging on the willows. Now, you stop think about that for a few minutes. And uh, if that uh, instrument was anything at all, it was much too valuable to have been hanging on a willow branch. All right. Much, much too valuable to have been hanging up there, just out there in the wind, blowing and moving it around. Perhaps if the wind was blowing just right and got in those strings as it was moving back and forth, moving back and forth, you could probably hear an eerie sound coming from those strings. Maybe a very mournful sound. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have these times, you and I will have these times when nothing goes right. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, I thought I had studied one time, and I, I'm just being serious now. We all have our times. I thought I had studied, and I got up, and I got talking about Calvary. And the fact that uh, I, I said that it wasn't in the scripture. It is. I was going through some of my studying, Brother Yule and, and, and the Greek and what have you, and, and, and I overlooked. <coughs> I was studying and thought, sure, I was right on target one morning and one Sunday morning. And I was in Acts chapter 10. I'm talking about when it seems like nothing goes right for us. I was in Acts chapter 10, and I made a statement that the Bible didn't say something. And right over in chapter 11, it was there. Sister Step came by on the way out, and she said, Brother Sparks, she said, you probably just need to read on. <laughs> so there's times for all of us that things just don't go just right. right. Amen. Right. As hard as we try, as much as we put into it, things just don't go just right. right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It seems like there'll be times that you feel like you just simply lost your song. Right. Amen. Israel had always been a people of praise. Amen. Even whenever they had come across the Red Sea yep. and going into the wilderness, yep. whenever they looked back and saw the waters had come back together and Pharaoh's army had drowned, amen, and no doubt there were parts of chariots floating all over the place, dead bodies too, if you will. Yep. Amen. The scripture said that Moses sang a song of deliverance. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Miriam, his sister, yeah. got a timbrel. Amen. A tambourine, if you will. She began to play. I'm satisfied that that was one of the prettiest sounds that you have ever heard yeah. in the whole entire nation of Israel singing the song of Moses, singing the song of deliverance. I'm satisfied there was music begin to join in. Other voices begin to join in. Don't you imagine there was some dancing going on? Amen. The things were going right at that time. Right. Amen. David brings the Ark of the Covenant into, his, into Jerusalem. Yep. And we remember reading the prior time prior to that that he tried to get it there. And he decided that he'd put, on a, put it on a new cart yep. while the Philistines had it on a cart. Right. Surely it's all right if we put it on a cart. Right. But you see, the Philistines didn't know any better. Right. Amen. But God's people had a, had a plan. God had a plan for his people. God had a plan for the way that that thing should be moved. Right. Amen. Put some, put some poles through the loops and the sides of it. Amen. Go so many steps. 
stop, offer sacrifice, praise, amen, pick it back up, go so many steps, amen, not haul it the way the heathen do, haul it the way God says. Amen, I'm telling you, God still got a plan for his people. He got a plan for us to walk by, a plan for us to live by, a plan for us to move. There's holiness of God that he's put in our hearts. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. But David brings that ark to home this time, and he's doing it the way the scripture said. Right. He's doing it the way the law of Moses gave the instruction. Yeah. And as they bring it into, into Jerusalem, the scripture said that he had his outer garment off, had linen ephod on, and he was dancing before the Lord with all of his might. Yep. Now, David was already a singer. He was already a composer of songs and various songs. Amen. And now here he was with all this going on. Scripture said he danced before the Lord with all of his might. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, when Solomon dedicated the temple, it's been a while since I looked at it, but while I was putting this together this evening and usually I have it before then but Brother Mitchell was planning, not planning on being here so I put this together this afternoon amen and I have read it a little bit but when Solomon built the temple got it built and they dedicated it they had can I just say tons of sacrifices all kinds of things and then they began to worship and sing, and while they were worshiping and praising God, the scripture said that the presence of God came down so great that they could not even minister. Right. Amen. Because of their worship and their songs. God's people have always been a singing people, if you will. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. We've always been a people that would glorify God. Hallelujah. We used to go over to church. <laughs> over at Danville with Brother Larry Weathers, and we he never did go by brother, he always went by elder and later by bishop. Yeah. And uh, that was his title. And I'm telling you, they didn't have as many going to that church as what we got here tonight. But I'm telling you, whatever they got loose, and they got into their worship. Right. I, I never seen the dancing in all my life. I mean fast dancing. And one night, and I'm talking about still talking about singing and worshiping the Lord. And one night I was scheduled to preach there, and nobody sat on the platform right there in that vicinity but the pastor, the visiting preacher, and the mother of the church, Mother Young, and the pastor's wife sat on over. A little fellow sat over on the left, and he had a some kind of a keyboard that he used. It had drums. It had everything in the world on it. And uh, it could be used for piano or an organ. And I'm telling you, he could make that thing scream. I'm telling you, he could make it scream. And they were into worshiping that night. Had been really getting into worship. And while we were worshiping, and I was standing up there holding my hands up, and I'm telling you, Somebody bumped against me on my right side. And I thought, sure, Mother Young had gotten in the spirit, you see, and staggered over there where I was and touched me. Amen. But when I looked around, she was sitting in her seat. She was an elderly lady. The pastor was still standing on my left. She was on her right, on my right. And I begin to think of that song, glory, 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 somebody touched me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. And amen, I got so excited. I begin to dance and worship. Now, they were different from us. If they knew dance, they wanted to get down on the hardwood, down on the dance floor. That's what they called it. And so I got to dance and got beside myself. Elder Weathers got me a hold of the elbow and led me down on the dance floor and we danced together. Let me tell you something. Amen. God's people have always been a people to worship God. I'm not to be like it now. Well, glory to God. We've always been a people. Amen. To let God have his way in our lives. 
Oh, glory. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Praise God. Sister, if you ever do some interpreting here, I'll have to slow down. Praise God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. The Babylonians, the Babylonians knew that those people, that God's people had a reputation for singing. Those Babylonians knew that God's people had a reputation for worship. And now here they were down in a strange land and they weren't able to sing. Right. They weren't able to worship. Right. Their hearts were wasting away. Can I tell you that somebody wants you to live up to your reputation? Right. Oh, I feel the glory of God here. Right. Somebody wants you to live up to your reputation. What God's called you to do. Right. Amen. To step out for the glory, His glory. And let Him have His way in your life. Amen. Don't you know that the world is stunned? Amen. When they enter into our churches and the presence of God begins to move and you can feel the glory of the song service. Amen. You've heard me say this so many times. I was at a camp meeting one time and I heard the moderator get up and he was the pastor of the church but he was also moderating the camp meeting and he said this church is geared for preaching. Boy, I thought that sounded good. Amen. Everybody ought to like good anointed preaching. Amen, brother. I picked up on that. This church is geared for preaching. And then one night, I had a nosedive. I wasn't preaching like I thought I was. I didn't get anointed that night. Since Paul didn't have been some anointed singing among us, it wouldn't have been anything. Are you helping me here for a few minutes? Amen. Thank God for anointed preaching. But I'm going to tell you, thank God for anointed singing. Right. Amen. So people who will lift up their voices to God and say, God, I'm offering my praises back to you tonight. Amen. That stuns the world when they come in and they can, be, they can see that and feel that. Right. Amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Him with the song. The psalmist said, praise Him with the harp. Praise Him with the cymbals. Praise Him with the high sounding cymbals, he said. Praise Him on the stringed instruments. I had a fellow tell me one time, he wanted to debate with me. Yeah. And I was just a young Christian. And I felt the call to preach, but I wouldn't study at all. And if somebody had been moderating the debate, I would have lost. He'd been to Bible school. He'd been taught what he, what he was teaching and, 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 and was well versed in it. And he said, over in the Old Testament, they have music. And then in the New Testament, he said, I don't read anywhere in the New Testament churches that they had any music. He said that we were instructed by Paul to make melody in our hearts, sing and make melody in our hearts. And so nowhere in the New Testament, but I did say this. I got this in, and I felt like he's pretty good. I should have been kicked for even been there talking to him. There's no business debating people. They already got their minds made up. Right. Amen. But I, I did get this one in. Amen. I said it like this. I said, now look, buddy. There's music over in the Old Testament. And we can find in the book of Revelation that there's music and glorifying God in heaven. Amen. Then don't try to take away my joy while I'm here. Hey Amen. Let me worship. Let me sing. Let me play on the string instrument the best I know how. Amen. Don't take that away from us. Praise God. Are oh, you helping me here a few more minutes? I want to let us pray quickly. Hey Amen. The Babylonians knew they were singers. But we need to do what we're best known to be doing. Hey Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him for everything that we've got in us. The Babylonians wanted to hear a song about God. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes we do run into those strange lands, don't we? Amen. Strange circumstances. Paul and Silas being whipped and in prison. Yep. 
sometimes it, it's almost mind-boggling. I've been scorned and had my feelings hurt. Oh, God. I don't think I'm going to get past it. They got the tire beat out of them. They had blood places running on them, brother. And about midnight, they begin to sing the praises to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Earthquake came. I heard a, I heard a CD. No, it was an eight-track tape. Not eight-track, but a cassette tape. I'll get around to it. Cassette tape back several years ago. So an old black preacher, a Pentecostal preacher. And he got to preaching about Paul and Silas. And he said they began to sing. And he said, you know, they didn't have no music down in that place. But they began to sing and they got God happy up there in heaven. And he said, when God got happy and got to pat his foot, amen, an earthquake happened. And they got loose from there. Let me tell you something. We ought to get heaven happy every now and then. When heaven gets happy, we're happy all over. Unusual circumstances or children get in trouble. Yes. Homes are in trouble. Financial problems. I've been there. I've been there. We've been there where we didn't know where what we was going to do next. I don't I'm I'm I'm, I'm lingering all over with me a little bit. I'm talking about when it was saying in a strange land. The Lord spoke to me told me to quit the job that I had. It didn't pay a lot, but it had a paycheck every two weeks. Every two weeks. And I quit. And I think that at that time, back in 1989, the church here was giving us about $50 a week. And I quit my job. And that's all I had. Now, I never did quit work. I probably should have. Just dedicated all to God. I've been further on down the road than I had. But sometimes it's hard to let go of it. But we got up against it. We didn't know what we was going to do. When Jim got out of bed, what was he at? Got out of bed one morning, told Sister Debbie, said, call Sister Esther and see if they'll like to be able to pay it. I done got a second notice on it. So if I'd done that, another lady in the church had a dream and she called Sister Esther and she said, I had a dream that your clothes was dirty. You know, you, you, your laundry was dirty and you wash it. Do you have anything to do your laundry with? She said, I just run out. And so she brought us stuff. You see, we've been there. But when God moves, yeah. you can still sing in those strange lands. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can still sing the songs of Zion when we're going through some things Amen. The world will look on and say, how in the world can you sing and dance and you're going through that? Do you know I've been redeemed? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Regardless of our circumstances tonight, can we still sing? Now, I'm human just like you are. And for me to preach this, what it will take and I've got the devil whispering right into one of my ears, yeah. sitting on my shoulder, and said, But you don't know what you'll be facing tomorrow. Right. No, I don't. Neither do you. Nope. Amen. Can you come pretty quickly here? We don't know what we're facing tomorrow. We went camping. One weekend with my wife's oldest sister and her husband. And there was just a heaviness there. We enjoyed it. It's the first time I ever had roasted hot dogs that had been rolled in meal first. Never had done that. They had all kinds of little things that they did for camping out. And oh, it was so good so good, but there was a heaviness on us. Right. All of us. Right. And just the next night, we go home. It's a Saturday, I believe, Friday or Saturday. We go home on a Sunday night because they get the call that her niece had been killed in an automobile accident <coughs> and her one-year-old little boy was sitting right between her. 
knees and that Jeep rolled over and killed them both at the same time. So we don't know what we're going to face tomorrow. No. But let me ask you something. Are you saved tonight? And you know your sins are under the blood? Now we mourned and we wept and we had a difficult time, Sister Pauline. We had a tough time. But you know God pulled us through that and he still pulled Gladys through it and she's lost two more since then. Wow. Only got one daughter left and one grandson. Right. So we don't know what we're going to be facing tomorrow. But the main thing is to know where our names are in the Lamb's Book of Life tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on. That whatever you're facing tomorrow, brothers and sisters, you can still sing the songs of Zion. This is Paul and can I borrow your testimony a little bit? I can help this. Brother Danny was dying. COVID had got all in him with pneumonia and messed his lungs up and they put the ventilator on him and he wouldn't pull him out and we wouldn't be able to respond. For all the while he was in the hospital. They let us go in. The COVID was bad and they wouldn't hardly let us in much but they let us in a few times and every time I was there as he stood by his bedside She would sing those songs, giving God all of the glory for everything, and him just about to take her husband on home to glory. She'd sing a while, she'd pray a while, she would shout a while. And the Lord took him home. Oh, it was difficult. It was a strange land for her sister. But she came home back to church. She got the hymnal and she still sang those songs of Zion. If anybody's got a right to shout, be anointed, she does. Amen. Hear me tonight. Amen. When we go through it, brother, and we keep on going and we keep on praising. Hallelujah. We're singing the songs in a strange land. Praise God. But God's going to come by here one of these days. The trump going to sound. Meet the Lord in the air. The apostle said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We're in a strange land, period. Praise God. But sometimes we hit those hard spots. Sing on, church. Sing on. While you're standing, somebody's not saved here tonight. Somebody needs to give their heart to God here tonight. Somebody might simply need to say, I'm going to rededicate tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Would you come? If you're standing with us, that's all right. Come on around these altars. Let's talk to God a while. Let's let God move and touch our lives. Let's let the Holy Ghost reach in and just saturate our souls with His presence. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.